have to get home. I hope you're doing well. I hope your family is doing well. I'm going to turn up my sound. I forgot about that. Okay, how is this? Is this better? Yeah, that seems to be looking good. Awesome. <sighs> Gonna make an adjustment so my mic is off camera. Hopefully that actually stays there. Okay. I think we're good to go. So what I want to do today is um, yesterday I sent out an email to my VIP list inviting them to send me photos to paint. Um, so I've picked five of those so far. Um, I think I'll probably be able to actually paint three of them today. I do need to um, do a little bit of panel prep. Um, I don't have three panels or five panels that are ready. So um, you're going to see me priming some small panels and, um, and getting them ready to paint. So um, it'll also involve like putting the backings on the panel so that they stick to my magnetic easel. You'll get to see what that looks like and you can even see the actual like magnetic um, I don't know what to call them like backings um, here so uh, you'll get to see that whole process and if you want to submit a photo for me to paint um, I probably will not be able to do it today but I would love to add it to the queue um, and what I've decided to do is um, is go ahead and choose five by seven panels. And I have one six by six. Um, and those are just gonna be um, available for $1.99 after, uh, after the stream. Yay! I'm glad you got a notification, Sean. That makes me happy. <laughs> it's funny. I'm so used to it taking people, like, a little while to join the stream that I just kind of assumed I was, like, talking <laughs> to an empty room. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to give others um, some time to hop on. And I'm just going to like send out a quick note on social media to let people know what I'm up to. And then I'll get right into panel prep. And then once that's done, that should be a pretty quick process. Um, I can do some Q&A during it too. Um, and then we'll get into painting. So... John, how are you doing? How is the magical land of Utah? Oops. Thank you. 
Okay, I have shared to Facebook. I am so glad to hear you're doing great. <sighs> yeah, things are pretty, pretty low key over here. Mm. <sighs> okay. So with that sent, I'm going to go ahead and um, I need to actually get out my primer so that I can go ahead and um, prep. I have two panels that I definitely need to prep. Um, like I know what images are going to go on them. Um, and then I have some others that are good panels that I just need to go ahead and, um, and prep as well, even though they won't be for this live stream. Hello, Scott. Did you get a notification? It looks like you must have. <laughs> Good. Good. I'm, uh, yes, this is going to be a lot, um, a lot more like streamlined, elegant. This is going to be a lot more elegant than that. Um, and I'll talk about that when, uh, when I'm ready to put backs on the panels. Um, okay. So, uh, I'm so glad you got a notification that makes me very happy. Um, did you change anything or was it just kind of like, it just took YouTube some time to figure out that like, yes, you truly did want to see when I was going live. Okay. Okay, I am going to get that primer. Be right back. Ha! You know, I kind of hate that, where it's just like, you feel like you're totally not in control of your technology, but I'm glad that it worked nonetheless. Um, okay, so what I have here is, let me make sure you can actually kind of see this. This is Rublev's Lead Alka Ground. I talk about this in one of my um, panel prepping videos. I think it's the one with the three images on the thumbnail, the three different paintings, and it says the new gold standard. I think the video title is um, what surface should you paint on or some, some variation therein. Um, there I walk through the whole process of this. So if you want like kind of an in-depth walk through, um, definitely refer back to that video. And then um, that being said, today I'll, you know, answer any questions you guys have, um, and I'll still, like, walk through what I'm doing. So, first up, um, this is a lead alkyd ground. So, the lead component means, hello, Carlos, welcome. Um, I'm just uh, getting ready to prep some panels and kind of talking through my supplies here. Um, the lead component of the ground means that it is is non-absorbent as I can make it. Um, and then the alkyd means it's fast drying. So first thing I need to do is make sure that um, the top layer of the paint in this can has not already dried. I noticed whenever I got like a 32 ounce can of this, I could not go through it fast enough and it, film, or it formed like a really thick, hard film at the top. Um, that progressively got thicker and thicker as the paint was exposed to more air. So um, 
yeah, this this helps me get panels ready to go really quickly. And then it also has like the surface quality I like because it's not a particularly absorbent. Um, so I'm going to switch over. Um, I'm going to be a little bit further away from my mic. Um, I'm not sure I can do a whole lot to fix that. I'll just try and like talk loudly, but I have the gain up all the way on the mic. So hopefully I'll still be audible. Um, okay. And I suppose I need a brush. Um, I'm just going to grab a big sable brush for this. I'll see if I actually am happy with that choice here in just a minute. Okay. Okay, scream really loudly, and by scream I mean type in all caps if you cannot hear me. I just realized it's like not a particularly helpful command. I'm just gonna like loosely keep an eye on the chat from over here. So just got my church key, I'm opening up my canister. Thankfully, all the shaking was like pretty helpful. It does look like there's a little bit of a film on this. So you can see, let me, so I don't know, yeah, you can see right here, there's like this little gap between the top of the paint and the wall of the canister. That means that some of it has started to dry. Um, so that's a bummer, but it also means it's a good thing that I'm going ahead and using some of this today so I can prevent more and more of it from drying. So I have a few panels that are already good. These are primed with some linen. So they're all set. And then this one I just need to cover a painting that I had blocked in on here previously. So all I want really is for this to be opaque. As you can see, I already had one layer on here that's totally dried. Um, I actually went ahead and did that work like several weeks ago. Um, but the nice thing about the Alkid grounds is um, they only take like 24 hours to be ready. So that looks good. I'm gonna switch over to this little six by six. Aside from making sure the paint was like mixed up, that it hadn't kind of separated, there's not really a whole lot to this. Um, you know, you can apply with something like a palette knife, you can apply with a brush, it really just depends on the texture that you want. And already that looks a lot better. You can kind of compare like Here's another painting that only has one coat. Oh, I have just realized you haven't been able to see this whole time. I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, now you can see like the difference between these two and this guy. So I'm going to go ahead and prime this, even though I'm not planning on painting on this particular panel this week. Um, just nice to go ahead and have a panel ready. It's 
possible on some of these that I may apply even more coats. Um, two is generally sufficient, but some of these have some like dark paint that I want to cover. So, I don't know. I'll take a look at these and just kind of see how they're drying. Thank you for yelling at me about the camera. I'm sorry, it took me like way too long to notice. <laughs> I'm gonna flip up my little preview screen. There we go. Okay. Next up, again, just getting some of the paint here. It's really is, you know, not tricky. It's, you can already tell. Sorry, I'll, I'll do that. I'm getting used to this live stream thing, guys. There's a learning curve. Thank you for bearing with me. I'm trying to work like somewhat quickly just because this stuff does not smell great. I'm sure the fumes are like also not great for me. That's one of the things I think about painting. Like we're all very afraid of things like cadmium and substances we know that are not good for us. Um, but really, so long as you not are not like eating your paint, the real concern is about the fumes that we all breathe in. just trying to figure out like where this stuff can go to dry. Uh. And I don't particularly want lead paint on my person. So being careful not to touch these. Although I will be getting some on my hands inevitably and then cleaning that off. Okay, last two. And I'm probably just gonna paint these kind of as one. Now one thing I can do while working on these is think about creating like interesting brush textures like you know kind of pushing it around or like getting some impasto even though this is very runny paint. Um, but honestly I'm so concerned with just like covering the old paint that I just want an even coat. I think if I want to build up the texture, I will do a third coat on these. And I think according to the instructions on the primer, what that would probably look like is me doing another coat tomorrow. Giving it like a full 24 hours to dry before we go in again. As ever, I really should like have put something down on this table, but what's gonna happen is I'm just gonna go at it with a uh, like a baby wipe and probably some Damsol. Just trying to knock down any depressions in the paint. I'm also getting rid of little places where the brush sheds. I found 
unfortunately, it's just hard to eliminate altogether. I, I don't think I found a brush that just will not shed ever. And last one. Boomer is coming over to inspect. Okay, turns out she wasn't that interested. Just like that, we have six freshly primed canvases. These should be ready for use um, tomorrow if I want to work on them with two layers or the next day if I want to um, let some of that, or if I just want to build up more texture or build up the primer layer at all. Um, okay, so next step, Going ahead and sealing this up. And then I'm just going to do like a quick wipe down of myself, the table, my brush is sitting in Gamsol. Um, and with that, I should be ready to start putting backs on the panels that are already primed. So definitely getting paint off myself first. I want to be really careful that if I eat anything later, there's no way that my hands are going to have any lead paint on them. quite see your comments yet, but it doesn't look like anyone is freaking out about audio or video, so I will read all of those shortly. If you're fast with the lead or with alkyd grounds generally, they don't need much to clean up. But if I let these sit for even 10 minutes, I'd probably have to bust out like a magic eraser or something to like abrade this off the surface. Okay. Say that looks pretty good. Um, okay, so next up is putting backs on these guys. So 
gonna go ahead and like make a workspace here with what little space I have left. I have my backs. These are slightly larger than these panels, but that's not a big deal. And then I have my panels. Um, and what I need to go ahead and get are my little adhesive strips. So just give me one second. Adhesive strips, I have these command, um, like 3M command small picture or poster hanging strips. Um, you can see like a single one of these maybe has like an inch of adhesive on it. So I'm going to be using two of these per backing. So I'll just need two more. So this is pretty darn simple. I'm gonna go ahead and get one of the backs. This is just, um, I think this is galvanized steel from a sheet metal supplier. I'm putting the like red side down on the little steel sheet. That leaves like the black wall side or ball side. Um, facing out and then I'm just getting my panel turning it face down and I'm going to adhere it like this so I take my little sticky off and do like so obviously this looks like a little bit janky on a small panel but this is coming off. It's really just for my own convenience. Um, and the 3M strips do an amazing job of holding this on. I've used painter's tape, um, and I've also tried things other than these little sheets of metal. Nothing works this well. I do not have to worry about um, the magnetic backing coming off of the panel, um, and these little like five and a half inch square sizes work really well. On big panels, I can just put more than one on there. And as you can see, like the only time it's really an issue for like small panels is if I have something that's like four by six, um, in which case, yeah, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't know when I would be painting that small. So, um, all right, with that done, I'm just gonna go ahead and stick him on my easel for now and go ahead and do the next one. And it, it doesn't look like you guys have any like pressing questions about this, which looks good. I can always answer more as soon as I can like actually read the chat worth a darn. panel, putting it face down, and here we go, And the nice thing about these two is they're really, despite like being held on there really well, they're very easy to also take off um, when the painting is done and it's, it's ready for varnish and framing. You can see I tried a lot of different things. So like this coating that's on here is actually rubber cement. That was the first thing that I tried because I thought I needed like crazy adhesive to hold this on, but as you can see, like I'm prying pretty hard and like this thing is stuck on here. There's a little bit of give because I only have like two points of adhesion, um, but I'm not gonna just pry this off. And part of the reason I knew this would work is because at my very first art show, I 
primarily had six by six paintings and I stuck them on the wall just with these little guys and uh, I could like barely get them off. It was like really, really hard to get them off the wall after we were done. So I was like, okay, those work definitely well enough. Um, okay, so I have these other two panels like ready to roll. I have all my trash. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and get situated, like get the camera changed for, uh, for painting. Um, no, it's funny you asked that, Sean. So I do use the strips to hang them on the wall, but for the wall, after that show, I, um, I realized I should really use, like, the Velcro version. Um, that way I don't, like, I, I don't need access to the little pull tabs to get it off the wall. Um, the way I had to pull these off of that studio wall after that show was like literally get a palette knife and like pry it off, which um, was not great. Um, <laughs> so I learned that if I wanted the paintings to be adhered on the wall with something like that, and I didn't want little tabs showing, um, it's easy to just do the Velcro and then I can just pull the painting off really easily. And then I can pull the Velcro strip by the tab to get, um, to get the painting or to get the adhesive off. Um, and that works really, really well. The only times I've had issues with like the large like Velcro, it's not actually Velcro, it's like little interlocking plastic things, um, but functionally it behaves like Velcro. Um, the only time I've had issues with them are on 12 by 16 inch ACM painting. So ACM is a little bit heavier than like Masonite. Um, and like a not very clean wall or not very good like adhesion. So like for instance, um, up on my wall right now, I have a painting that I hung like hung um, just below the ceiling and I didn't have like a step ladder. So I just kind of like lightly pressed it to the wall and like a few hours later the painting fell and like thankfully it was totally fine. Um, not like not a scratch or a ding on it. Um, but I think it's cause the wall was like a little bit dirty and I couldn't apply enough pressure for the adhesive to take. Um, so I got a tall friend <laughs> and, um, and it's stuck on the wall just fine now. Um, I think that's literally the only time I've ever had an issue with this method of hanging though. Okay, I'm just like catching up on your comments. Yeah, Scott, that sounds, that sounds like a good primer. Um, I know like Richard Schmidt has really strong opinions on marble dust and the reason I use the Rublev is it's like the only thing I could find without it. Marble dust is more absorbent whereas lead is less. Um, I do notice like some differences in absorption but as long as I'm using like a pretty good lead ground it's not like wildly off. The only times I've like truly had issues with absorption is when I don't have enough primer layers. Um, so I actually was just teaching a lesson recently and I, I grabbed a panel that, um, I think it just had one primer layer and it was not the world's most beautiful panel, but I just kind of thought like, eh, whatever, um, I'll give it a go. And it was like, it behaved so strangely, it was almost unusable. Um, so, lesson learned. Um, okay, let me go ahead and finish getting the camera all set up for this, because this is not the angle you want to be at. Actually. Okay, 
So you can see the nice thing about the metallic backing is that with the edge, the edge has um, magnetic strips here, 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 and then all the way along the edges. Um, right now, this back is really only adhered to kind of like the equivalent of this portion. It's not adhering to any of the edges at the moment. But you can see like this is really stuck on there. But if I really want to move it, it's not hard. Um, and I can also move this, you know, with my fingers just on the sides. I just, I find it a lot easier than, um, than having to use clamps. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Scott, I have, I have heard a lot of people, um, say they like marble dust for that reason. So I think it's just kind of like to each their own, their pros and cons. I think it's, it's really, it's just good to like be aware of those pros and cons. And then you can make, you can just make a choice as to, you know, what's, what's going to be more important to you. Is it the surface absorption? Is it the tooth? Um, there's definitely no right or wrong answer there. Um, okay, and I just got some more paint on my hands. So, baby wipes it is. Whenever I get paint on my hands from a brush or a palette knife or whatever, um, I clean my hands and then I actually clean the tool that was getting me dirty in the first place because chances are I'm going to grab it again and I'm going to get dirty again. So. By the way, a student told me a really interesting tip the other day um, and I'm curious if you all have tried this or if you've heard of it but if you ever do get paint in your clothing which for me is really rare um really the only time that happens is if I'm wearing long sleeves and I like lean over my palette um but still it does like happen on occasion I've heard that Murphy's oil soap the stuff that I use for brushes that have paint dried in them um is freaking amazing um that it just does like a really, you just put it on the um, part of clothing with oil paint on it. Um, you don't have to like pre-treat, you just put the oil soap on it and then you put it in a regular wash cycle um, and it should, you know, should get the paint out. I have not yet tried it, but I'm very intrigued. All right, so um, for those of you who came in a little bit late, what I am doing today, I've just done some panel prep. Um, so if you want to, um, well, I do have a full video showing how I prep panels with um, a primer. Um, so I'll link that in the description if you want like the full tutorial or um, you can definitely go back and watch this later if you want to see that. And then what I'm transitioning into now is that um, I sent an email out to my VIP list yesterday asking people to submit photos um, that they would like to have painted. And I've just picked a few of those to work on today. Um, and I'm probably going to try and work about an hour on each one. Um, this is gonna be kind of like a timed painting exercise um, and then it'll be available, um, ideally to the person who submitted the photo, but if they, you know, they have first right of refusal, and then if someone else is interested, um, these are just going to be $1.99, um, for each one. Um, so yeah, I thought that'd be, like, I know a lot of people, you know, being stuck inside, um, <laughs> 
suddenly we're really interested in things that can make our homes feel like a nicer space, whether that's like getting new shelves to organize something or having something beautiful on your walls. So um, let me go ahead and pull up an image. I think I'm um, today I'm going to start with one that's most adjacent to um, what I would pick naturally and I'm going to treat that like as a warm up. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to crop the image. Um, I want the crop to match the painting or the panel. Um, so I just adjusted that to be five by seven, um, which is great because that was like really close to what I had going on already. And I wish there were a way I could like share with you the photo. Does anyone have like a good idea about how I could show you the photos I'm working from without like just kind of giving you guys the files yeah like this particular photo um i don't think anyone would mind if this were like shared um but for others you know others are like more personal photos so i don't just want to give everyone access to download them but i love for you to be able to see them um I'm gonna wait for the stream to catch up so I can see if you have any answers. And in the meantime, I'm just gonna read through some of the chat. Um, ooh, okay, I'm glad to hear that you've had success with the oil soap on clothing, Sean. Have you, has it worked for you if the paint has like dried? Cause I definitely have like the other jacket that I wear. It has like some very faint oil paint stains that um I think it's gone through the wash even and like I tried to get it out other ways and I couldn't um so I'm curious if you think it would be worth you know me letting the uh, oil soap like treat that for a while and then try again because I want to believe I want to believe um <laughs> yeah Scott I hope that that's a really good tip I would especially like keep baby wipes handy and try and keep yourself clean as much as possible. Um, and then try and keep the brushes and tools you're touching clean too. So like if you have to kind of frequently wipe down, um, I personally would highly recommend trying to keep your workspace clean just because um, while paints are safer than they've ever been, I think it's just generally good practice to not give it any, like limit the ways in which the paint can potentially harm you. Um, and for me, that means like not leaving paint on my skin, especially my hands, if I'm going to eat something. Um, and I think clothes too. Um, yeah, I've heard anecdotal reasons why that could be helpful. Hi, Amy. Welcome. Um, yeah, so let me, I'm going to actually kind of show you my setup with my computer real quick. I can do it with my webcam. So what I'm going to do here is now my computer is like corded up to everything, so I might not be able to move it a whole bunch, but um, here is my setup. So I have my Edge Pro gear. I have a light shining over it and then here I have this is a Sony a6600 let me get out of the frame um, and then it has two things plugged into it one is USB power so that's actually plugged into an outlet in the island behind me um, and that way I'm not running through battery while I'm streaming and then the second cord is this has an HDMI out uh, I think it's mini HDMI. So this is mini HDMI to HDMI. And then I can't quite show this to you, but I have a little device. It's called a cam link. It's a 4K image capture device. 
and that plugs into an HDMI cable and then it outputs into USB. Um, so that's feeding into my computer right now and then I have a program called OBS um, which is processing the video. And then as far as audio, um, this is also like kind of awkward to show you because I kind of have to like turn my computer around. I don't know if I have the cord length for that. Um, <laughs> but I have like, I have like a $20 microphone um, and then like a $10 mic stand that's clamped to a stool that my computer's sitting on. Um, the mic is going into um, an amp and then the amp is plugged into my computer and that also talks to the OBS app. Um, and that's how you're getting all the input. And then I just have my webcam is the third, um, third device that's feeding in there. Um, okay, it doesn't sound like anyone has a strong suggestion of, excuse me, how I can get the image to you. Um, I'm wondering if I can actually do it in, if I can do it in OBS. Um, so let's see. Oh, image. Um, okay. Yes, yes! This is genius. I am so pleased. Okay. Downloads, okay, yes. Okay. Oh gosh. <laughs> um... Yep, all right, I need to make this way smaller. And then I need to rotate it. Thank you all for bearing with me not, not knowing what I'm doing. Okay, can I rotate this? Trans, yes. Um, transform 90 degrees clockwise, yeah. Okay. I'm so excited. Um, so now you guys are going to be able to actually see everything I'm doing. <laughs> Yay! Thanks for making a YouTube. Um, yes, what I think I'll do, Amy, is I'll probably make like a little PDF and like put it on my website. Um, so I probably won't have that today, but I'll put that together quickly because a lot of people have been asking me about the stream setup. Um, and I think particularly like right now, that's um, super helpful. Yes, fuzzy grass. Thank you for the photo, Stephen. Oh, goodness. Okay. So gonna switch over to Photoshop. <laughs> yes, you can officially bother me in the comments. Thank you for commenting instead of calling because at this point um, you know better so I would not answer my phone anymore. Okay. So I'm just taking this brush that I used to prime the panels earlier and I'm just like trying to make sure that's actually clean and he's gonna go back, back in the brush stand. Eh, eh. No, I'll use him to like prime this. Um, okay, so one thing I'm gonna do in Photoshop to this image is I'm just gonna put a blur on it because I want to block in um, like the overall impression of it. I don't want to get bogged down in like painting every little wispy like I need to know what to call them. What are like the individual things on a dandelion? Because that's what these look like. But anyway, every little individual like spore, fuzzy little spore, I don't know. Someone's like a botanist can, can let me know. 
Um, okay, so I just, you guys won't be able to see the blur because you're not getting like my feed out of Photoshop, but you can just kind of imagine it blurry. And I'll probably go ahead and like take glasses off for this too. At this distance, my glasses don't really make a difference, but I figure anything that kind of keeps me from like zeroing in is generally helpful. Okay, it's just like a pretty interesting image, like color wise. Um, there's a lot, there's a like pretty intense value range um, and I don't want to jump straight to black. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with like the sky and tree color. And it's not going to be like super vivid and it's just like ultramarine and transparent oxide brown. Seeds, okay, I'll take it. That sounds accurate. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, and I'm going to make this a little bit more neutral for places where our actual, like, grass is. And I'm going to leave some, like, blank space in places where I know the grasses are there and they're just, they're white. Like, there's no reason for me to not just use the white of the canvas to my advantage there. I'm just putting in some green. All right. That probably will not stay put, but that's okay. I'm not worried about this being like super duper exacting. I just want the overall impression to work for me. Um, next thing I wanna do is start to lift out places that I might have put paint down where I didn't quite want to. So I just have like a pretty firm, pretty firm brush. Um, and I'm going to use that kind of like a kneaded eraser to just like lift off my wash. Yes, I do sometimes do that. Um, it depends on how light the objects need to be and like exactly how forgiving I think the surface will be. Um, it also depends on the size. So like if I'm working really large, I might not have time to pick everything out while the wash is still wet. Um, and that means I probably will not do that. I'll probably just reserve the lights um, because there's always the chance that I would have to go back in the next day to lift out the light areas and the wash could have already dried and like stained my canvas and not given me like much in the way of recourse. So I suspect that this goes a little bit higher. By the way, the image you have on the feed here is not cropped, but the cropping I did was very minimal. So the overall proportion should pretty much look the same. Okay, overall, looking good. I'm actually doing something I like never do, which is clean a brush and just put it away. 
Um, but the reason is that I know I'm not going to grab either of those brushes again, so I might as well just have one fewer thing cluttering up my workspace. All right, the next thing I want to do is start to build up the darks. Um, so I'm kind of considering this painting like like a blue orange like complementary scheme. There's gonna be, but I think like the color harmony comes back to like ultramarine blue. That's that's my thinking. Um, so. I'm going to go ahead and start putting in dark mixtures that are based on that. And really, I just want like the value story to begin to read similarly to what what we're all seeing in the photograph. as much as I can, I'm thinking about these strokes as like really counting. Um, you know, I could theoretically do fewer strokes if I had a larger brush, but I'm like, I'm pretty content with how this is working. Um, and I'm not going back over a place I've already painted. Really just trying to kind of do it all in one go. Darks look about where I want them, and now I'm going to switch into blocking in the grasses that are in the distance. It's not far off from this like wash color, um, but I just want to start building up the paint a little bit. So this is going to be really similar to the wash itself. This is ultramarine blue, transparent oxide brown, and now I'm introducing white. Um, and it's, it's a little warmer to me than the transparent oxide blue, so I'm doing a touch of permanent magenta. at this point I'm seeing more places where I'd like to break up the larger shapes um, specifically with some of the dark mixture so I'm gonna go ahead and take that opportunity now And 
the consistency of this mixture is basically what you get straight out of the tube. Um, I'm, I might have thinned that mixture, um, but the darks, I'm not thinning. Um, I'm not like following a rule, I'm kind of just going by what feels right. And I'm introducing a little bit of transparent oxide red. It's one of the things I really like about this image is um, you have these like glowing reddish bits. So I have a few that are kind of up here and I just, I happen to know that this particular color will do like a really beautiful job of mimicking that. Uh, yes, the brush I'm using right now is one of the Eclipse Extra Long Combers. Um, and one of the cool things is I find it's like really helpful to see a really zoomed out image of both like the reference and the painting. Um, here with this setup, like in the chair in front of the computer, that's a little bit awkward. Um, so the kind of quickest and easiest alternative in my opinion is like I'm looking in my live stream window where the painting and the reference are maybe the size of my thumb um, and I can like see really quickly kind of what's working and what's not. Um, so there's a good bit more green up in here um, and then all of our lights are much warmer um, in the photo than they are in the painting. So. Um, I think those are two things I'm going to go ahead and adjust. I'm just taking the same comber, I'm like wiping the paint out of it. Um, and I'm going to put some fresh Viridian down. It's funny, I was like truly hoping I would not have to buy paint until the end of the month. Um, but I might not have that option. So we have our viridian. I'm also gonna like play with some transparent yellow green or green gold, um, depending on brand. And I'm just kind of sweeping that in. Yeah, I switched to the comber because um, I really want some juicy paint here. Um, so I knew that like switching to this early would encourage me to kind of build habits around that. So next up, we have the actual little wispy seeds. Um, I'm looking at yellow ochre plus white for this. I think that's going to work. And then I'm going to put just a little bit of Gamsol in this mixture because I have not put down any paint under this. Um, so fat over lean will kind of allow me to do this right here. Um, and I'm doing it partially just because white is like a really stiff color. Um, so I'm gonna take whatever I can to thin it.
my shadow areas are looking like just a little bit too bright so I want to go ahead and like knock those back a bit so I'm mixing like my dark mixture into this kind of periwinkle color I had mixed before for this I really want some of the edges to start getting lost, which is why I knew I had a value problem because I couldn't really lose an edge when the value was um, off that much between these two sections. Now I will say like one thing that's going to be challenging about this piece is I don't really have like a focal point that I'm glomming on to here. Like in a portrait, you know, I kind of get excited about their face and um, everything else just follows. Um, with this piece, everything feels kind of tricky. There's nothing where it's just going to be like, I'm just going to paint it and it's going to feel great <laughs> and I'm going to get some momentum. Make sure the focus is doing exactly what I want. Okay, that looks, I think that looks better. I really want tea, and I didn't bring it over here. And I think down here, it actually gets a little warmer. So I have like quite a bit of blue in that mixture. And now thinking about kind of introducing some transparent oxide red or transparent oxide brown. And just kind of marry marry those sections. I don't want to get this like too muddy, but I do want like the overall, I want this to start harmonizing as quickly as I can get away with. Cleaning up some of the shapes. I'm going back to this little brush to erase out the positive shape of the grass. It's not much different than what's there, but right now the, the object in the background is cutting into it and it doesn't read and it could already be reading if I let it. So. Okay, that's looking, looking better. 
And now I'm going to take that same treatment and apply it to the positive shapes here, but I'm not going to be erasing it. I will paint it in. When I started, I wanted this like warm white color to be really, really pure. Now I'm okay losing that. So to that end, I'm like actually going to go in and forcibly knock back some of these. And another thing I'm kind of reminding myself is just like I could pretty easily erase this out. If any of this does get muddy, which I'm hoping it doesn't, I have some recourse. So what I'm thinking would be helpful right about now is to go ahead and find something that will ground this. Um, so I'm thinking like this bit of grass right here, that's going to be my star. Um, and I'm going to start rendering that out. Um, and I'm going to keep it like really truly soft. Um, and I'm going to keep the brushwork interesting. You know, I don't want to go too smooth or too tight. Um, I just want this to start to read. And I'm kind of just going to like see how this goes. And that's probably going to inform the way I render like the rest of the little bits of grass.
So one way I'm trying to keep this super loose is I'm still like, still counting brush strokes, but I'm also mixing a lot of paint and trying to put a lot of paint on my brush. I think that's honestly probably the best thing I could be doing right now. That guy has a pretty hard edge because he's kind of hidden behind a reed. So I don't want to lose that. And there's a detail I like oddly really want to put in. Um, could be a mistake, who knows, but we're just gonna, we're gonna try. And that is this little like orange highlight. Um, it's like a little stalk that's catching the light. And I think what this is gonna need so I'm kind of treating that like the base and then I'm going to build it up just a little bit with more cat orange. Yeah. So kind of weird that I like oddly like just really wanted to put that in, but sometimes we just, we get to be a little weird. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, I think the oranges down here make this like especially striking and like attractive to look at. So now I'm just kind of going back and like further looking at my darks. I'm trying not to introduce white into these mixtures, which is a little bit hard given that I already have some white on the canvas. So I'm trying to stay really like fresh with my paint mixture. Like I'm not, you know, I'm wiping the brush down. Um, reloading the paint often so I'm not like inadvertently blending things.
And there are places where the sky really like brightens up up here. So trying not to disturb too much of these like pretty translucent washes I put in, but just like lighten up. and it should start to feel a little brighter, um, especially once I actually kind of put blue back over these areas. But even like you can see the values are already working a little bit better. Okay. All right, I'm gonna grab a tea and then come back and like, just kind of detach for a hot second and chat with you guys, answer questions. So if you have questions, go ahead and let me know in the chat or if you just kind of want to tell me what's up. <laughs> How's your work day going? What are you up to today? All right, I will be right back. Stephen, is your enthusiasm for motion graphic work genuine or like mildly ironic?
Ah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, I figured I would kick off the day with a stream. Um, and then later today, I'll probably, well, the plan is to actually like record this with my camera. So I can't stream for this part, but um, let's see if I can like turn my camera so you can see see what I'm about to be talking about. Um, okay. Lift that up. See if we can. Okay, I have to move. And the camera has to be oh good. in for a very large, this is a three by four foot painting. Um, let's see if there's a way that you can kind of see all of it a little bit better. Eh, barely. But yeah, the actual like over there. Doesn't have the light on at the moment. So this week I've really just been focused on like the drawing. So all of those shapes, as blobby as they are, are actually pretty much in the right place. And I'm just going in like tightening and tightening the silhouettes and then I'm going to have like free reign to kind of paint the, uh, the interiors. Yas, big painting, yas, flowers. Oh, goodness. It is kind of convenient that I can't just go out and get like worse snack food than an apple right now, truly. Because I would love something savory with lots of calories. Instead, this is what I have. It's delicious though. Exactly. My hope is, I figure no one actually stays the same weight through all of this. 
<laughs> my someone just so who is in the stream just commented but not in the chat that this is definitely apple eating asmr which i'm fine with if you are um so yeah i figure like no one stays the same weight you, you either like kind of low-key starve because you didn't give yourself a whole bunch of really tempting snacks or we all put on 20 pounds I hear you on the safflower oil, Scott. Um, I think that's okay, though. Like, yeah, it might dry a little bit slower, but it shouldn't be too different. Slash, hopefully you don't have any reason why it needs to be framed right away. Um, but if it's just about, like, the surface quality and, like, working wet into wet, it could be, like, really good practice. Um, you know, if you just think in terms of, like, getting a lot of paint in your brush and being really light with the paint application, it won't really matter if the underlying paint layer is wet. Um, and that could, you know, it could be helpful. It could like force you to kind of work a little bit differently and get really comfortable working super wet in the super wet. Technically everything I do is wet, wet on wet, but you know, if it dries or like, if I work really thin, it doesn't behave the same way. Um, so, yeah, sounds like a could be a good learning opportunity, which I think is kind of like the name of the game right now. You know, like we all have all this extra free time. I don't know if you guys saw the video that I posted yesterday, but I mean, without like social obligations and like hobbies outside of the home and meetings outside of the home i have so much more time so much time so good for good for working on uh improving certain painting skills <laughs> i hear you on the impatience I imagine like with a couple of days though, it would be workable if, if you truly do need it to be dry. Okay. I really wanted to like tough it out and Um, what am I trying to say? Like, just go for like a straight hour and like finish that painting and this, that, and the other. Um, and I think I just need to accept that my attention span doesn't work that well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to alternate between this and one that was sent in, a photo that was sent in over Facebook. Um, which I'm going to share with you guys in just a second. And that way I can still like functionally, you know, keep these on a time limit, but I'm not kind of forcing myself to work past um, my own personal like attention span. Okay. Okay, cool. Oh wow, that image is teeny tiny. So 
So Yvonne sent me this. And what I'm going to do is just the beauty of these little magnetic setups. Mm. I'm going to shift that over. Yeah, the beauty of this is that I can put more than one thing out here and it works. So that image is not quite the right crop. I have a slightly different crop of it in my in Photoshop right now. And we're just we're just gonna repeat the process. I'm going to do the same kind of wash. I always like starting paintings, like when in doubt, start a painting. You know what's not fun? Finishing a painting. Actually, finishing a painting is fine. It's kind of like the middle. The middle, not my favorite. Middle is always about that like question of like, can I finish it? Is this going to work? By the time I'm at the end, like I know, I know it's working. I know what I have to do. Okay. So gonna grab an like a very small this is number five evergreen short flat from rosemary and as best as I can I'm gonna figure out kind of the box that this horse is in like how far away is he at his edges from all of the edges of the canvas um, this is going to look a little bit different for you guys, again, because I have this crop happening. So his tail kind of goes like right up to the edge. And his feet stop like about here. And I'm drawing him kind of like a stick figure because I kind of have a shorthand for horses. I'm drawing him differently than I would draw, definitely differently than I would draw like a still life. That is for certain.
And since the brush has like some Gamsol on it, um, that goes really far forward, okay. Um, since the brush has some Gamsol on it, I'm kind of just drying it off frequently rather than like re-wetting it. It's gonna get too runny if I'm too aggressive with the re-wetting. I feel like How many short hands tall is this horse? I feel like there's a joke in there that I'm not getting. <laughs> and I feel really tall. Oh, was it because I literally said shorthand earlier? Okay. Yeah, now I do feel dumb. It's kind of funny because I'm like, my drawing looks so awkward at the moment. but I also just like trust that I can fix this drawing, which is not always the case when I put something in anatomically. Okay, I wanna like smudge out some of the old lines because they're confusing. <laughs> Thank you for cheering me on. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay, I see something that's wrong, which is that he is not this much of a long boy. Already, that looks better. And similarly, this is like close, but I just feel like there's just no way that that his legs are that far apart. So we're gonna adjust all that. Okay, that's like, again, looking more like a horse. I think it's kind of important here, like not to let ego get in the way. Cause I could easily be like, no, I know how to draw horses. And like, why is this not working? Um, and just kind of have a freak out. Instead, I'm kind of thinking like, no, I know how to draw horses, which means that when I inevitably do something wrong, I'm gonna see it and I'm gonna fix it. Not, I'm just not gonna make mistakes. Like the block in is so much about guessing. Okay. I feel like that's looking, looking pretty good. I'm gonna do one other thing. Which is to begin 
looking at the shadow. My hope is that it can kind of help inform other components of the drawing. Because all of these shapes should work together. And I think his tail like stays higher. I think it does like that. Okay. All right, drawing is in. Um, there is a question of whether or not I want to erase some of this green and to be perfectly frank, I'm not sure what my answer is. So by the way, I'm less than 150 subscribers from being able to do live streams on my phone. And the cool thing about that is that even for projects where I want to use my camera to record the painting footage, um, I can still use my phone for a live stream it probably won't be as like sophisticated as this where you have kind of two views because um, it wouldn't go through my computer it would be going through the YouTube app on my phone but I thought that would be kind of cool and it'd be cool to be able to do more live streams and not kind of have to choose between do I want footage of this or do I want to be able to like talk to people while I'm doing this so if you know anybody who might like my channel, um, please, uh, please share it because I think here in about a week or two, I should get from 850, which is about where I'm at, to 1,000. And that is, that is the threshold that I need. And I don't know if Yvonne is in the stream or not. I know she commented on my Facebook post, but um, Yvonne, if you watch this replay or if you are here, I'd love to know more about who I'm painting right now. This looks so awkward and my weird kind of like erased out silhouette. It looked nice before I like started painting the legs. 
but like I had to do it, man. All right, I suspect the closest color here is Terra Rosa, but I wanna use Transparent Oxide Red because it just looks, I mean, it's designed for transparency and we're at that stage where like, there's a blank canvas underneath it. I can go transparent. So I'm gonna start there and then use like Terra Rosa to build up some of that opacity. This tail is kind of cool. It has like a purpley reflection to it, but I'm not going to be able to show that in the block and that's going to have to kind of come later. And I talked about this in a previous video. Um, it's a similar like five by seven painting of a chestnut horse out in a field. Um, so if you want to go look back through my videos, that is what the thumbnail looks like. Um, I talk about how there are certain colors of like hair or of animals coats um, that just they behave differently in light than you would imagine. So like someone with blonde hair, for example, um, they actually have like very little yellow in their hair when you paint them. Um, it looks super weird if you actually like paint someone's blonde hair yellow. And similarly with a chestnut horse, if you paint all of them red, um, it just, it looks bizarre. So I do kind of start with like a warm brown, a reddish brown. Um, but from there, I'm like quickly going back and darkening a lot of places and lightening a lot of places. Um, until suddenly there's like very little red left, but that's when they actually look like a chestnut horse, so. Mm. 
Exactly, Scott. Yeah, and I think that's true in general. Um, like, there's rarely a subject where it doesn't happen to a certain extent, but I find that people get super tripped up on things we associate strongly with colors. Um, so blonde hair being a really good example. Um, I find it's also true with blue eyes. Like, someone who has blue eyes in a painting... They rarely actually look blue because a lot of times um, their eyes don't have light shining right on them. It's kind of a common thing for a photograph, but not a very common thing for like painting f a model from life. Or even if you're lighting a model as if you were going to paint the model from life. Um, so I think... All of those places where you can kind of challenge your assumption over, well, this thing is this color, so that's the color I'm going to mix, like the better off you're going to be. Okay, he is kind of moving downhill, but he's more uphill than I've painted him, so... I'm gonna go ahead and make that adjustment. Looks nicer. And I think just because I could use like a change of pace, I'll go ahead and just kind of marry him with the background a little bit. I hope this is a hem. It's very hard to tell from the photo. And the, the vignette is like pretty strong on this. Um, so I might paint it in just to kind of get the values, but then like soften it just a little bit.
the interesting thing I'm seeing here is the green I'm putting in is darker value than my block in. Um, and I think it could cause some problems. Like I might have to lighten it around the horse because again, there's like some pretty strong vignetting on the photo. One of the things I look for when I take my own photos is typically what makes for a really good photograph um, and what makes for a really good painting are very different. Um, so I tend to take photos specifically for a painting. Um, and the reason is, like, there's a few things I look for. One is color harmony. Um, You know, I really need to be able to work off the colors that were there in real life. Um, and if the photo isn't harmonized, I don't have like a whole lot of choice. Um, I also tend, I mean, especially with like people, well, there's a couple things. For like animals, super duper action shots do not look like a painting. They look like photographs. Um, so I'll typically, you know, shy away from, uh, from something that looks like I couldn't have observed it. I think like with this horse trotting, you know, it's a pretty repetitive motion. Um, that I feel confident that like, if I were there, I could make it look, I could paint a similar picture basically. Um, now, similar to that, like when, when painting people, I tend not to have them wearing expressions that they could not hold for like a traditional painting sitting, um, even if I'm taking pictures of them. And then I tend to also light things the same way I would light a model. Um, it's not like the photography studio thing where, you know, you have a whole bunch of like key light and fill light and all of these other things that tend to be really flattering. They also tend to like flatten out your sitter's face. Um, and one thing I really want in a painting is to be able to see the form of something. Um, so I tend, you know, I'm going to want to take pictures that feel really three dimensional. So as I'm looking at this, I'm trying to think like, okay, right now this isn't particularly harmonized. Like the blue has none of the red of the horse in it. Neither does the green. Um, and even like the sky and the grass there, they don't really have intermingling colors happening there either. So. What I'm probably gonna do is try and dull down the grass while preserving some of these values. Um, and I'll probably dull down the horse as we get into painting the horse's coat a bit further. Um, this is something I'm kind of just doing experimentally on the fly. So we're just gonna see how well it works. Ooh, just like dropped my, dropped my brush, thankfully not into any paint. And 
And similarly with our sky, I'm taking some transparent oxide brown into that mixture. And I'm also gonna dull it with some white. It's making that, it's gonna make that blue less intense. Ooh, that's really brown. Okay. So more white, more blue. Okay, this looks slightly less like noisy, but it's still like, it's really flat. And I think that's because I literally have like no value change happening aside from like shadows on the horse. Um, so let's see what we can do. Okay, that I think is looking a bit nicer.
Okay, Liz. So what are you all up to? I guess probably not much different than when we were chatting earlier, but I'm gonna ask. really reflects the dystopia that we're living in. Oliver, did you order food? What do you order? Yeah, I do. <gasps> you ordered me a whole thing of fries? Oh, thank you. Yeah. Hand sanitizer is a flavor enhancer. Oh, cause she won't talk. Uh -huh. Boomer, do you know that I'm streaming? Are you being a polite studio assistant? All right, Oliver really disrupted my plans with his surprise french fries, which like I'm not complaining about. But now I have to figure out like, do I eat the fries on the stream? Do I take a break? What am I gonna do? I suppose I could like end the stream, eat the fries, and then, you know, work on other projects. My thought for this was, given that I clearly do not have the attention span, at least right now, to finish these in one go, I could probably chisel away at them a little bit every morning. What do you all think about that? <laughs> I haven't seen Frozen 2 yet. Is it good? What did I say about Frozen 2? Sean is watching Frozen 2 for the 100,000th time. Probably. You have a three year old, right, Sean? Wouldn't it be sad if I knocked these fries over? That'd be heartbreaking. Ooh, he even put salt on them. You're a good roommate, thank you.
thank you, Sean. Tomorrow, um, I should have those other panels ready so I can start some more of them. Um, I was hoping to start a third one today since I have another panel ready, but honestly, what streams reveal to me is that my attention span is not as good as I think it is. <laughs> like, and it comes out in other pieces. I just kind of strategize where I only go in like half hour bursts and then I switch to a different painting. Um, yeah. Okay. So I think that's what I'll do. I think I'll go ahead and end the stream for the afternoon and that way I can get some work in on the big painting and I'll probably also do some work on um, other commissions that I'd really like to just really get some progress in on, especially because we're, you know, we're coming to the end of the month. Um, so I definitely want to make sure that I'm wrapping up, uh, wrapping up as much as I can. Um, and I can probably get a little bit more done off the stream. So I will plan, I'm actually making one of the things on my agenda for today is make tomorrow's YouTube video. So I'm, uh, I might not stream tomorrow just so it's not like competing with the video. We'll see. Um, if I do stream, I'll try and set it up so that like you guys have already had a chance to watch that video or I'm not promoting the stream on social media or something like that. Um, I know, I know, I'm so sorry. <laughs> the french fries, they really, they threw a wrench in my productivity. <laughs> that's, that's really funny, Sean. <laughs> mm. Yeah, if I recall, I was that way with Star Wars. And I think my favorite when I was that age was Return of the Jedi, which like, I mean, I was four. I think I can have that not be held against me. Um, okay, well, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of switch gears and just like enjoy eating some fries for a few minutes. Um, <laughs> and I hope you all have a really productive rest of your day. Um, and I look forward to continuing these little paintings throughout the week. Um, and until then, be safe, be healthy, happy painting. Thanks everyone for hanging out with me.